Sudanese Clashes 2023-2023 Sudan Conflict An armed conflict between rival factions of the military government of Sudan began on 15 April 2023. It started when clashes broke out in western Sudan, in the capital city of Tartum, and in the Darfur region. As of 25 April, at least 559 people have been killed and more than 4,000 others had been injured. The fighting began with attacks by the Paramilitary Rapid Support Forces, or SF, on key government sites. Airstrikes, artillery, and gunfire were reported across Sudan, including in Khartoum. As of 23 April 2023, the RSF leader Mohamed Hamdan, Hamiti Gagalo, and Sudan's de facto leader and army chief Abdel Fattah al-Burhan claimed control of several key government sites, including the General Military Headquarters, the Presidential Palace, Khartoum International Airport, Burhan's official residence, and the SNBC headquarters. The conflict between the two generals has led Sudan to the brink of renewed civil war, and it has been referred to as a burgeoning civil war. 1. Background The history of conflicts in Sudan has consisted of foreign invasions and resistance, ethnic tensions, religious disputes, and competition over resources. In its modern history, two civil wars between the central government and the southern regions killed 1.5 million people, and a continuing conflict in the western region of Darfur has displaced 2 million people and killed more than 200,000 people. Since independence in 1956, Sudan has had more than 15 military coups, and it has also been ruled by the military for the majority of the republic's existence, with only brief periods of democratic civilian parliamentary rule. 2. Political Context Former President and Military Influence Omar al-Bashir led the war in the west of the country and oversaw state-sponsored violence in the Darfur region, leading to accusations of war crimes and genocide. Key figures in the Darfur conflict include Mohamed Hamdan, Hamiti Dagalo, commander of the Rapid Support Forces at the time of the 2023 clashes. 3. Prelude On 11 April 2023, arrest forces deployed near the city of Muro and in Khartoum. Government forces ordered them to leave, but they refused. This led to clashes when RSF forces took control of the Soba military base south of Khartoum. On 13 April, RES forces began their mobilization, raising fears of a potential rebellion against the junta. The SAF declared the mobilization illegal. 4. Timeline On 15 April 2023, the Rapid Support Forces, or SF, attacked several Sudanese armed forces, SAF, bases in Sudan, including Khartoum. Clashes between the two groups occurred at the Presidential Palace and at the residence of General al -Burhan. In response, the SAF closed all airports and conducted airstrikes on RSF positions. Fighting between the SAF and the RSF continued in Khartoum, with heavy weaponry being used. This SAF accused the RSF of assaulting civilians and carrying out acts of looting and burning. Witnesses said that SAF reinforcements were brought in from near the eastern border with Ethiopia. A ceasefire was announced but fighting continued, with explosions reported in El Obeid. The situation in Moreau was returning to normal, with the SAF regaining control over the airport. The RSF claimed to have repelled a SAF attack and shooting down two helicopters. Heavy shelling and gunfire was reported in Khartoum, Khartoum Bari, and Omdurman on the day of Eid al-Fitr, 21 April. On 23 April 2023, Sudan experienced a mass jailbreak at Kobar prison, with over 25,000 detainees escaping. There was also a near-total internet outage across the country, which was attributed to electricity shortages caused by attacks on the electric grid. Fighting between the Sudanese Armed Forces, SAF, and the Rapid Support Forces, RSF, continued, 
with heavy artillery fire reported in Omdurman, despite a 72-hour ceasefire that started on 27 April. On 30 April, the SAF announced it was launching an all-out attack to flush out the RSF in Khartoum using airstrikes and heavy artillery. The Sudanese police deployed its Central Reserve Forces in the streets of Khartoum to maintain law and order, and the unit later said that it had arrested 316 rebels, referring to the RSF. In early May 2023, fighting continued in various areas of Sudan, including Khartoum and Omdurman. The Sudanese armed forces reported reducing the rapid support forces' combat capabilities. While the RSF claimed to have shot down a MiG fighter jet, clashes continued and almost 5,000 people were reported injured since the conflict began on April 15. 5. Casualties As of 25 April, at least 559 people have been killed and more than 4,000 others had been injured, according to the World Health Organization, WHO, and Sudan's Federal Health Ministry. The Sudan Doctor Syndicates said at least 436 civilians had been killed and 2,175 others injured. The United Nations Children's Fund said that at least nine children had been killed and 50 others had been injured in the fighting. On 6 May, Save the Children UK said that at least 190 children had been killed in the conflict. 6. Foreign Casualties According to a Syrian diplomat, 15 Syrian citizens had been killed in Sudan. An Indian national working in Khartoum died after being hit by a stray bullet on 15 April. Two Americans were also killed, including a professor working in the University of Khartoum who was stabbed to death while evacuating. A two-year-old girl from Turkey was killed while her parents were injured after their house was struck by a rocket on 18 April. 7. Evacuation of foreign nationals. The outbreak of violence has led foreign governments to monitor the situation in Sudan and move towards the evacuation and repatriation of its nationals. Among some countries with a number of expatriates in Sudan are Egypt, which has more than 10,000 citizens in the country and the United States, which has more than 16,000 citizens, most of whom are dual nationals. All content on the Angie Norman channel is provided for educational purposes. Thumbnails and titles are for illustration only. Thus, today's information, I hope it is useful and becomes knowledge for all of you. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. See you again.